Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of The Flying Scotsman Christmas. Now in the last episode we discussed the possibility of using a business class laptop from a few years ago as a machine for a school student to do homeschooling on and we also set up an appropriate operating system on that computer. In this episode we are actually going to update said operating system and populate it with a few applications that um, you and um, the child in question may know and love. So with that said, well I, I must kind of actually um, qualify that and say we don't actually look at um, any of the edu educational software um, that is available. There is There are vast libraries of uh, different educational programs available for Linux um, and this was um, absolutely nothing at all as far as I'm aware to do with um, the um, one child per laptop um, project which um, I believe did run on a version of um, Ubuntu or Debian or something like that. It was certainly Linux anyway, but um, yeah, I mean, this this is literally just kind of basic because um, I think the original premise for this video was um, a laptop for anyone to be able to um, take part in, um, you know, just be able to get online and, and interact with people and take part in groups, but um, I don't know where down the line this video kind of transmogrified uh, into uh, a uh, you know it being about a laptop for a school student um, <laughs> but uh, those are the breaks so so basically it's a, it's a could be a machine for a school student to be able to get online and, and do school work or it could be a machine for a vulnerable person to be able to get online and interact and you know have some in human interaction so um, yeah, you you decide what it's going to be used for. I guess um, I, I'll just kind of I'll just kind of very clumsily provide um, a roundabout way of uh, how we're going to go about uh, setting the machine up. So without further ado, let's get back to the action. So the next thing that you want to do is um, well, it will say that you have um, it will come up at some point that you have updates. Um, what I like to do, obviously, I like to go into the system settings and start customizing it. Um, but this is this is just me. I I need the larger mouse pointer. I also uh, could use um, bigger text. So you know, I'll probably look at the scaling uh, options. I nearly said scalability. That's that's not the correct word. Uh, 0.48 for the uh, mouse pointer and um, if I go down to the display options display a monitor display uh, and then I can go global scale and then 125 percent that's that's quite easy to do um, you can scale it to what you want and uh, you know for the most part it works quite well um, so I'm just going to update now you can use discover on Kubuntu to uh, run updates if you want or if you're feeling um, or if you're feeling brave um, you can update using the terminal and um, the command that you would want to uh, do uh, issue here is sudo apt update so that's uh, looking at the repository for changes and and so we want to run a new command after that one sudo apt dist upgrade and then you need to type in your uh, password press return now the password will not be visible as you're typing it don't worry 
So it's found a whole load of stuff. Uh, do you want to update? Yes. So that will go away and update. Now, depending on the speed of your internet connection and how much stuff needs downloaded, this could take quite a while. So, you know, probably it's, it's probably time for another cup of tea while you're doing this. Also, you might notice that even though I changed the mouse pointer, it's still small when I'm at the desktop, but it enlarges itself when I'm in various and sundry applications. Don't worry, that is perfectly normal behavior until you reboot. Why it's gotta be that way, I do not know, but that's the way it is. At least it does work when you reboot the system, which I will be doing after I have installed uh, all these updates. Now, let's talk about installing apps in Linux. I've shown you one way to install apps using the apt command. Um, there's also the discover. Um, there's also the discover store or the discover um, program that will let you install apps in Kubuntu. However, a lot of apps increasingly are um, coming either as uh, flat packs or snaps. Now these are platform independent containerized versions of apps that you can easily download and install to pretty much any distro of Linux that supports um, the flat, uh, flat pack, flat hub and uh, the uh, snap store. Now, good news, the Ubuntu 16.04 and its derivatives, um, not including Mint Linux, uh, Linux Mint, uh, Linux Mint does not have SnapD enabled. Um, you only need really to install the Snap Store. And this is very easily done by going back to the console, sudo, typing sudo apt install snap dash store. And put, um, and put in my password. Notice a pattern, a lot of password entry. Oh, okay. Okay, no, it's not sudo app to install snap dash to the door. You actually install it using snap. So sn you actually type sudo snap install snap dash store. I do apologize. So that is setting up snap and, and you can actually use snap to install uh, various um, various apps, uh, for example, Skype. Um, I think um, AnyDesk um, versions of uh, LibreOffice, newer versions. Although I will go into LibreOffice because obviously 2004 comes uh, with a pretty old version now of LibreOffice. Um, so yeah, that um, that is gonna need updated. So what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm just gonna wait for the snap star to uh, install. Not very snappy, is it? Okay, so now that the snap star is installed, we can um, we can have a look at it. Snap, snap star. Now, it's always a good idea to look for something in your distros repos first of all. So using um, discover if you're not to Ofe with the uh, command line. Uh, first of all, uh, only look for containerized versions of apps if if you can't literally find them in your distro. Speaking of which, let's go and um, let's go and start out um, LibreOffice. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to add a new repo, which is something else you can do in uh, Linux. You can so a repository is basically a store of apps. And when you use apt or discover, it will look in all the stores that you have set up saying, is this application in any of these stores? And if it is, it'll be like, okay. Or if anything matches the search term, it'll be like, okay, well, this, this is what we've found. If you're using apt and you've typed it, obviously you'd need to know the name of the package you want to install if you're using apt. Um, but um, obviously, if the package name is in any, if the package in question is in any of the so-called stores, it will uh, install it. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell 
Ubuntu that we want uh, the LibreOffice repo. So that will say, okay, we'll look for any up-to-date versions of LibreOffice in that repo as well as the Kubuntu repos. And the way that we do that is um, we go, we need to put in a command sudo add apt repository space ppa colon LibreOffice slash ppa. Um, you should be able to Google this. Um, you get information about the repo. Um, so what we want to do is want to press enter and then that will obviously go and work and add the repo. Next we want to sudo apt update and essentially what that's doing is it's updating the catalog of um, that's updating the, the catalog of all the apps that are available and now we see that some stuff is upgradable so what we can do sudo at dist actually i think we want to do full upgrade here and look we have new versions of libreoffice so what i want to do is i do wish to install this and away it goes so now we will be getting the latest version of libreoffice rather than just the one that comes with the version of Kubuntu that we are using. That just keeps us right with the latest features. Now there are other Office suites and like I discussed earlier, you could install a minimum version of Kubuntu and then just install only the stuff you wanted if if you felt brave enough to kind of deal with that installing stuff which you know i mean that's that's fine if you do that's fine i mean the, the thing is linux is something that you know you'll mess about with you'll learn stuff you'll you'll maybe mess stuff up but then you'll you'll go to the forums and, and be like oh crivens I've, I've messed this up and you know you'll google stuff and then you'll find that other people have made the same mistakes and you know you'll you'll get solutions on how to fix these mistakes and you know as as a learning experience there's a lot of people who've really enjoyed messing about with linux but even if you don't want to do that kubuntu or ubuntu or xubuntu or ubuntu mate whatever you're using these distros are designed to just be installed onto any off-the-shelf computer and for the most part just work and there we go that's open office uh, LibreOffice rather installed and um these icons look very much the same, but look, now we have the newest version. I believe we've got LibreOffice version 7. Um, I'm going to just go to about, and there we go, as uh, 2020. Uh, which version? Yep, 7031. Nice. So there we go. Now, next, what we want to do is install Flatpak. There, install flat pack. Although I, ah, uh, sudo, ah, jings, apt install flat pack. Ah, oh, jings, right. Oh, and then there's, uh, now you might find there's packages to auto remove, um, like just there, we did. Um, if you want to run sudo apt auto remove, beware that you could end up bricking your system. So unless you're confident, you really know what you're doing, um, don't run that. Um, I mean, most of the time it will be fine, but if you're not sure, just, just don't even bother. I mean, as it turns out, these are just basically stuff to do with LibreOffice, like old ver old versions of stuff that's not needed anymore. But now we have Flatpak installed, so, you know, we can access that, should be able to access that using Discover. Um, but let's go to the Snap Store, and um, because a couple of things that we can get from here that you probably might find quite useful, actually. 
Oh, and there's, um, there's updates. GTK Common Themes. Nice. Okay, so what we can do is we can explore and then we can search for stuff using this magnifying glass. We have found Skype. Now, this is something that is getting shut down at some point, but, you know, there's certain people still use it, so it's, it's kind of nice to have unable to install Skype. Skype has installed Snap change in. Okay, then. But um, there are things that we should be able to install, for example, um, Discord or Telegram. In fact, yeah, let's let's get uh, let's get Telegram installed. So I'll just uh, click that, and there we go. That's installing the Telegram desktop client. Very easy to install in uh, the Snap Store. A um, bit more difficult on Ubuntu itself. So there you go. So I will go ahead and install some apps and I will uh, get back to you once that's done. So we can actually have a look at, you know, just some of the stuff that you can do on Linux that you might feel comfortable with on Windows. So here we are um, a few days later. I have um, a few apps installed, but um, I just wanted to show you um, other ways that you can install uh, some more of uh, the more commonly used apps. So Zoom, that's something that we've all been using in 2020, right? So let's install it. Now, um, Flatpak and uh, Snap, as I've said before, are both enabled in Ubuntu. Um, so what we're gonna do is, um, I'm gonna zoom in there so we can see what we're doing. Um, I'm gonna use, um, well, first of all, I'm gonna use Snap to search for Zoom. So Snap, um, I wonder, sudo Snap search Zoom. Okay, so let's have a look at some of these uh, programs. Um, okay, so we found it, Zoom client for Zoom cloud meetings. So what we can do now is type sudo snap install zoom dash client. And then that will go off and install it. Now, for some reason, Snap does take a while to install various and sundry things, but, um, yeah. So, you might be wondering why I have to type sudo if I'm going to install something, because I've, I've uh, put it in a few commands now. And what sudo essentially does is tells the computer that, hey, I'm a user with admin privileges or root privileges, and I would like to make system-wide changes. So by typing in sudo, it's essentially telling the system that I want to run this as a root user. Um, and, you know, it will then ask for my password to confirm that, and then I can then go ahead and do what, Ever I want. Now, if someone who doesn't have root privileges tries to run this command, then they will get um, quite a frightening prompt that um, the uh, user has the user is not in the sudo -ars file, and that the incident has been reported. So. I've never actually had a look at these reports, but um, I guess they're there if you're wanting to uh, clip on your kids. Um, well, I guess they're there if you want to monitor what your computer's been doing. Um, the sudo command will clip on anyone who is not actually a sudoer. But now that uh, Zoom has installed, we can go to it from the, um, I think, the internet 
uh, group. And there you go. You have access to Zoom. Now, there are also a few Microsoft things available. Um, so you can get... Um, there is a version of Microsoft Edge currently in development for Linux. And if you're unsure of how to install anything or if it's, um, you know, you know it's available for Linux, um, you're wanting to know how to install it on your particular distro, in this case, Kubuntu. First thing, first thing is that Kubuntu is basically Ubuntu. So, you know, you're not having to look for Kubuntu specific versions of programs unless you're wanting a KDE version. That's, but if, to be honest, it really shouldn't need to concern you whether you're looking for a KDE version of an application or not. Um, you know, for most applications, it just doesn't really matter. So let's say we're looking for the uh, Microsoft Teams for Linux. And just Google it. Microsoft Teams Ubuntu. And we see how to install Microsoft Teams. And how to install Microsoft Teams Linux um, on Ubuntu and CentOS. Um, Ubuntu 16.04 and 20.04. And that basically just there, you're actually given like what commands that you need to copy and paste. Um, so literally you could just copy and paste as I've done there. And that's now went out to the internet and is going to download the Ubuntu version of Microsoft Teams. And there are different ways of installing the package. Now, this website suggests using dpkg-i. Actually, you can, you can use apt because that will work out if there's any so-called dependencies that are needed. Now, you might be wondering, what's a dependency? A dependency is essentially a program or a library or something that the app that you're wanting to install needs to run. Okay, so let's imagine if you're on Windows, you're installing a game because you're wanting to play it. How many times have you went and installed a game? Maybe not necessarily recently, although some games do do it. How many times have you went to install a game and it's it's actually came up and said, hang on a minute, I need DirectX, and I'm going to go and install that. See, what DirectX is to games on Windows would be called, in the Linux world, a dependency. It's a library that is needed for a game to run. In that case, DirectX, uh, in, in the case of DirectX, it uh, helps the game it acts as an interface between the game and your computer's hardware, whatever your computer happens to have for hardware. Uh, but that's that's beside the point. So if if you're if you've got a .deb file, which is essentially equivalent to a Windows installer program or setup.exe, if you just installed that using a um, using something like uh, I don't know gdebi or well, maybe no. I think GDB does as well. If you if you installed that using certain installers, um, that didn't check for dependencies, then what you might find is you'll try and run the application, you get a screen full of errors. Not pretty. So we're in the slash temp directory because we needed to be. So what we can do is type ls, and you'll find the um, Teams installer. So what you can do is sudo apt install. Um, and I think it's dot slash teams. And, and you can usually use tab to fill in the rest of it. So once you've done that, that's perfect. It's um, looking to see if there's any dependencies. Now I've just installed a new Linux kernel and it's like, well, here's the old one. You could auto remove that if you wanted. I should probably reboot actually. <laughs> Um, but Microsoft Teams 
if it's not under internet, no it is, it's under internet. So there we are, it's, at the moment we're, we're, it's just a preview, but, um, but there, there you go. It looks like, it, it quacks like Microsoft Teams, it looks like Microsoft Teams. I said that in the wrong order, but there you go, Microsoft Teams on Linux. More importantly, Microsoft Teams natively on Linux. Now there are other things that you can do in Linux. You can run various and sundry Steam games. And I'm not gonna show you that in this video. I probably will show you that in another video. Um, my has I, I did show Steam running on my Haswell build uh, with Crash Bandicoot using Vulkan. Um, this laptop, <laughs> this laptop will never ever support Vulkan because it uses Intel graphics from the Ivy Bridge era. So that's never going to happen. Sorry, just it, it just doesn't. Um, so, but that is something. I mean, there are games on Steam that are, you know, Linux compatible and don't necessarily need Vulkan. Um, so, I mean, I've got Euro Truck Simulator 2 working on an HD um, 5670 or 5750 or something. I can't even mind what it was, but it's it was... Um, it was an old AMD graphics kind of, could have even been a 7750. I think that's what it was actually, in the old Dell XPS. Um, so yeah, I was able to get Euro Truck Simulator 2 running on that. Um, so I mean, some games will run, some won't though. So I mean, that that's a bit sad. Um, what you can do though, if you're wanting to play the occasional game on, on a laptop such as this is, you can tap into the many interesting open source games that are available on Linux. Some of which will run on pretty much anything. So not only do you have, um, you know, these uh, little desktop games like um, uh, K Sudoku, uh, Sudoku uh, you know, which is basically, there you go, you, you, you can play Sudoku, absolute, or Sudoku, absolutely fine. Um, you do have other things like obviously there is um a solitaire game in this case it's k patience go for klondike you get the classic solitaire nice had to show that there are also uh more involved games you've got urban terror which is a quake 3 based you've got open arena which is a game quake 3 based so there's there's uh, definitely first person shooters or if you're wanting a cheeky um, kart racing game that's not too dissimilar from uh, Mario Kart. So, maybe kart racing isn't your thing. Well, how about Extreme Tux Racer? Where you basically got to slide down a slope and collect as many fish as you can... And it's, it kind of reminds me, even though you're not actually skating, you're actually a penguin, you're just kind of sliding down. Um, it kind of reminds me of Cool Borders in a way. And, and some of the music is uh, fantastic. Not that you can actually hear it. See, now I can break blocks with my head, just like in Mario. I can collect coins, just like in Mario. Um, I have different power-ups, just like in Mario. And I can lose my power-up if I touch an enemy, just like in Super Mario. I think you can see where this is going. One final thing that I would like to point out is I know that um, your new laptops are all nice and fancy with uh, backlit keyboards and even machines of this age. You could um, you could get machines from this era with backlit keyboards. Not to worry. Um, if you push this wee button at the top of the display, you get a wee reading light. Very similar to uh, the ThinkPad uh, Think Light. There's that. And it pops up. I mean, that is cool. And then if, if, if you don't want that light, you can put it away again. Just 
press it in, it clicks back, and it's away. So, there you have it. Hewlett Packard EliteBook 8470p with an Ivy Bridge uh, processor and um, 8 gigs of RAM as it turns out and an SSD. Um, cost me, well, like I said before, I mean, I did have to buy a couple of things for it. So, cost me, I'm going to say about 120 all in, you know, with the SSD. SSD is not required for Linux, but it can certainly make your machine work faster um you know and and if you if you find that uh, trying to install an efi mode is too difficult well you don't actually have to you know i just did that because i kind of like doing it you can literally just boot straight from a usb flash drive with linux on it and install it just follow the instructions to install it and you know it'll install in more traditional MBR mode, and it'll work, you know. I just kind of like EFI mode for a few various things. Um, it seems to it seems to work nicely with SSDs, and actually, if you're uh, dual booting, which you can do in a window, uh, Linux and Windows box, EFI mode isn't a bad thing to have. But with that said, I think um, I think. I've said all I need to say in this video, so I think I will call it, um, I think I'll call it a day with that, and I'd like to thank you all for watching, and please do feel free to join me for the next episode of The Flying Scotsman Christmas. Cheery bye.